Santa Margarita Catholic High School. In the dirt, and he gets another strikeout. 17 strikeouts for Grant Taylor, number one in the history of Washington State baseball. Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today I have on Washington State University's frontline starter for the past couple years, Grant Taylor. Over his tenure in Pullman with the Cougs, he has accumulated 252 career strikeouts, which is third all time in Washington State University history. He also set the school record for strikeouts in a game when earlier this year, he struck out 17 Huskies in Seattle on his way to a complete game one hit shutout. Grant is now preparing for his next steps post graduation, which includes the MLB draft this upcoming summer. I hope you enjoy the episode and go Cougs. And this episode of the Couch GM podcast is sponsored by Black Label Supplements. They're a third party tested, athlete approved supplement company. Highly recommend their stuff. Go check out blacklabelsupplements.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off your next order. And as always, if you're thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, whether you're a sports fan or an athlete, reach out to myself, the Couch GM, to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. And with that, let's get into the podcast. Grant, thank you for joining the podcast. I uh, first, I mean, I'm a Washington State grad, so I try to keep up with what's going on at WCU and, and with their baseball program, but especially, you know, on a certain day in March 28th at, at the University of Washington with your school record 17 strikeouts, that definitely, you know, put you on a lot of people's radar, I'm sure. But I'm, I'm appreciative of you, of you joining the podcast and I'm excited to hear a bit of your story. Yeah, thank you so much, Connor, for having me on and being able to share some of my stuff I've dealt with at WSU. Absolutely. So yeah, let's start back with how did you get into sports in the first place? You know, what was your upbringing and uh, how did you get up to Washington State? Yeah, no, I mean, started playing baseball when I was five or six years old, just playing Little League, you know, pony ball um, down in California and and then started to grow and started to get better at pitching. And I was like, I can probably do this thing in college, maybe, you know, so work my way up to varsity and play varsity, get a couple, you know, reach outs from coaches and stuff, universities, and luckily enough, was able to reach, um, commit to New Mexico State University, uh, my junior year of uh, high school. And then that, uh, that coaching staff actually um, went to WSU um, this summer of me going into my freshman year of college. And basically I was like, well, crap, I wanted to, you know, go to get coached by these coaches, you know, I'm kind of want to stay at New Mexico. So was fortunate enough to get a call through a third party and get able to go up to WSU. I had no clue where Washington state was and what it was about, but, you know, being here for five years now, it's a great place to call home for sure. Yeah. What, what was your first trip up to Pullman like? Because, you know, if, unless you know kind of what you're getting into, you fly into there and you're amongst the wheat fields. What was that first experience? Yeah, I remember actually asking the recruiting coordinator at the time. I was like, hey, can I get a visit? He goes, hey, it's uh, mid-July. Like, you should just get ready for school. I'm like, okay, fair enough. So ended up making the 18-hour drive up with my family and uh, get all moved up in the dorms and stuff. Very Everything was moving so fast with, you know, orientation, all that stuff. So I, I was just taking it all in, the, the wheat fields, the, the school atmosphere, the football field, baseball field, all that stuff, all the resources. Mm -hmm. It was it was so cool. I was lucky enough to have a really good roommate the last um, five years, uh, Nate Schwartz. Me and him have been roommates for five years. You know, we've moved from the dorms to apartments. So we've enjoyed each other's company over the years for sure. Awesome. And then that, that freshman year was 2020. So you mm -hmm. get up there, you get going in baseball. And then, of course, COVID happened. You know, what was that experience being a college athlete your first year there in a new city, a new new university? And then, and then all that happens. Yeah. It's actually funny, you know, graduating and looking back at like my freshman self and stuff and seeing like how much I've grown, but yeah, I, funny story, me and my Nate, Nate Schwartz, my roommate, we were actually late to our first ever, um, college lift. Um, it was basically lined up as we finish practice. You go over lift will be at four 30. We finish an hour early at practice. We're like, sweet. We can go to our dorm, get all our stuff, get all the, Nike gear and all that stuff and get ready. And yeah, we actually showed up late, got yelled at by the strength coach, but it was a good experience. Um, no, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and the COVID kind of hurt 
you know, I feel like we had a good team that year with Kyle Manzardo, Zane Mills, you know, they, those guys came back, but you yeah, know, the experience itself was crazy, you know, getting shut down so fast and, and just getting shipped home. Um, my dorm was still fully furnished with all my stuff in it. I had to come back up in June and get that stuff in a, you know, timely matter. But yeah, it was, it was crazy. You know, started playing catch with a uh, chain link fence at the park um, uh, during COVID. So really had the best catch partner. No balls went yeah, past right. him. Then, yeah, you didn't have to go ch chase any no. balls yourself. No. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you know, you get through that freshman year, you head into your second freshman year in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, now you're actually, you played in a, in, in a few games that, that first year, but then, you know, what was that second fr uh, freshman year like? Yeah, I mean, it didn't really feel like freshman year again because of, you know, just the growth I had, you know, mm -hmm. throughout COVID and stuff like that. I felt like I matured a lot as a pitcher. Um, so I just kept on getting opportunities. Um, ended up heating up, I think, at the later part of that season, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then went into summer ball, pretty hyped up, confident that I could compete at this level and got good experience. So, yeah, that that COVID freshman year felt like not really like the freshman year, but, you know, it felt good to get back out there and play again. And you went from the bullpen to the starting rotation. Mm -hmm. I assume that you were a starter in high school. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what, what was that transition like and that process of going from the bullpen back to, to the rotation? Yeah, you know, I started in high school, so I kind of had a feel for, you know, how to compete on the mound for a long amounts of time. And going into college, I was super open-minded about whatever they needed me to do. I really bought into the, you know, help the team win. You know, it's not all about you. So really bought into that. And, yeah, being able to start again was super cool. Um, they gave me an opportunity. I kind of just ran with it. I like starting. It's honestly a lot of fun to get settled in and face the lineup once or twice and stuff like that. And, you know, just the whole atmosphere and vibe of, you know, the starter and the routine-based stuff is super – I'm super into that. So, yeah, I was super hyped and pumped up that I got to start again. And in your first uh, Pac-12 start, you ended up earning the win against USC. So mm -hmm. what was that – you know, what was that like starting for the first time in a Pac-12 game against, especially an opponent like USC? Yeah, no, I remember that so clearly. Shoot, we were down in California, had a lot of family down there watching me. Um, got the opportunity to start on that Sunday. Kind of was like, well, I have nothing else to lose. Just go out and compete and have fun. So I did that, gave my team a, a good start. I think I threw five innings, um, you know, got worked through some stuff. I, I enjoyed the the moment for sure. And I think uh, our head coach told us before that, like that weekend was like, you know, we haven't like no, I think it was like no sports team at WSU has beat USC this year. And we're like the last chance. And like, I don't think, I don't remember if we ended up winning the series or not, but just a game was what we were looking for. And we ended up getting that win on Sunday. So that was super cool to be a part of. Awesome. And then after that year, you head into your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. What was that, that, next year knowing that you're heading into that next season as, as a starter in the rotation? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I worked my way up during summer ball. I played in, in Corvallis. I had a great experience with the Knights, got a ring for it. Um, a lot of hard work. I think that helped a lot going into my, uh, what is that, COVID sophomore year. Um, mm -hmm. In the fall, really just dialed in my, my starting routine and what worked for me and kind of took off running there. And then that next spring, you know, had fun competing. Uh, I think I worked through a Friday night, Saturday starter role, got some good starts, um, put my team in, you know, winning positions, stuff like that. And just honestly enjoyed the experience of being a college starter because not a lot of people say they, they can start in college. So, yeah, I definitely got comfortable and just went to work for sure. And so backing up to that summer when you were playing for the Corvallis Knights, I'm actually in Richfield, Washington. And so the mm -hmm. Richfield Raptors are right here and I'm going to yeah. be doing some post-game podcast with them and players and coaches. What was your experience playing in the West Coast League? I mean, being in the Pacific Northwest and seeing a different mm -hmm. side of of this state, you know, the wheat fields compared to the mm -hmm. the mountains and the trees and going down to Bend and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the way up to um, Cowlitz County. What, what was that summer like? Oh, my God, it was unforgettable. Uh, the experience, I think it was like the, just, you know, God's timing and, in what I needed as, you know, a person and a player, you know, I got set up with a, an amazing host family in Corvallis and, 
an amazing roommate, the coaching staff, you know, they, they helped me and, you know, molded me as the player I am today. And I give them huge credit. Uh, but yeah, no, the work put in and the, you know, the, the, the hitters that I faced were super good. I played with Travis Pizana, you know, and I think that was super cool experience. And, you know, a lot of good name, big name guys that, you know, or hope to get drafted soon, all that stuff. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, ben was beautiful. Um, I don't think, you know, I have, I wasn't, I've never visited Seattle or that area before, before going to WCU. So being able to kind of be in the area for a whole summer was super cool. And the, the experience in Corvallis itself with all the food and shops and the team oriented stuff we did. It was a lot of fun for sure. Yeah. Were you able to get up to a Mariner game? Uh, no, not during that stint. No, I ended up going up okay. with a friend later on. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah and, uh, I was going to ask if you played with Travis Pizana because I knew mm-hmm. that he played in the West coast league with the Knights. So, you know, he was at a different spot in his career back then. What was, what was it like to, to play with him? Yeah. And now cool. compete against him. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. Cause you know, we don't forget about each other. We still chat here and there and give him props. He gives me props. You know, I love facing him. Um, you know, I struck him out, you know, he gets a double. So it's kind of fun to give and take and compete against those good guys like that and good players. But yeah, when I played with him, he was super young and just, you know, starting his career at Oregon State going into his freshman year. And I knew he was going to be good with his work ethic and, you know, his mentality of, you know, being a good leader and just enjoying the game day by day and stuff like that. So yeah, that was such a fun experience to be with him. Yeah. And then after that summer, you head into your junior year in college, you know, just kind of progressing through your career. What was that, that junior year, like, uh, you know, 13 games started that year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, really went in as the starter, um, me and, uh, Cole McMillan, he was also there on the rotation. He was a good buddy of mine. We got super close roommates throughout the year and stuff like that. But yeah, that really helped. I had some good, some highs and lows, you know, and that was a lot of fun for sure. And then I just knew like, you know what, this is, this is my deal. And I just got to get better at, you know, something every day. So I did. And, and then fast forward to this year, you know, I had a great year. So I was super pumped. I could do that. Walk me through the progression of your, your arsenal. And do you have a baseball on you by chance? I do. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go through your pitch grips and kind okay. of what you're thinking when you're, when you're gripping it and how, as you're releasing it. And then walk yeah. me through, you know, as you've changed your arsenal along the way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have a four seam fastball. Um, kind of grip it like this. Really emphasize, you know, finger pressure on the laces to really pull down, get, get some good spin rate. Because mm-hmm. I know um, a positive and a strength that I have as a pitcher is pitching, you know, um, down at the zone, but also top of the zone. And then my change up, I have it here like this. Okay. And I really focus on putting it deep in my, you know, pad of my fingers here. And I have a lot of pressure on my ring finger and my thumb. So kind of like mm-hmm. that, if I weren't, if I were to take these balls off or my fingers off, but yeah, I throw it off of that, try and have little pressure on the pinky and really just throw with arm speed. Um, I think with a change up, you know, when you're doing it and you're throwing well, you're throwing with arm speed and you're throwing it down and it also mm-hmm. plays off the fastball. So, and then my Are you slider with that. Um, I think just natural pronation. I try to think of, you know, pronation on the mound, um, especially nowadays with, you know, pitch calm and, you know, the pitch clock and all that stuff like that. Like there's no need to add any pressure of, well, I got to do X, Y, and Z. So I just kind of get the grip and trust the training that I had with it. And then move into my slider, really kind of standard. I just put a lot of my finger on the, on the seams of the ball, my thumb and, my uh, middle finger here and I kind of just rip at it. I try and throw it as hard as possible. Um, I've had some guys say, you know, it's like a cutter slider type deal, but it gets out. So, you know, it gets swings mm-hmm. and weak contact. So if I throw with arm speed, I get a lot of good swings on it. And then my curveball, I actually switched it up a little bit, you know, a year and a half ago, but I went spiked to get more of that 12, six and have mm-hmm. more command of it down in the zone. So, really try and feel the pressure of my finger into the, you know, the lace and stuff like that. So I like throwing this one a lot because it plays really well off, you know, my fastball, if I can go fastball up or curveball, then fastball up again, you know, it's something that I like to 
throw a lot. You know, I like the pitch design and the shape of it and all that stuff. So I enjoy throwing a lot of them. I've uh, really enjoyed throwing my changeup this year with uh, new coaching staff here at WSU this past fall. Nathan Choate helped me out with the new changeup grip. I think that was like the one puzzle piece I was missing, which is a good changeup for, you know, lefties and righties. And just being more competitive with my fastball in because it opens up the whole plate, you know, and it gives me more freedom to execute down. Um, so, yeah, those are kind of my, my four. And I just think instead of having so many pitches, I just think of dialing in four, you know, three or four pitches and, you know, compete with those because on the mound, it's your strengths against his strengths. And, you know, if you can execute, we'll get them out for sure. Here's my best pitch. Good luck hitting yeah, it. Exactly. Are you an analytics type guy? Um, this last past year, not really. I really just trusted in pitch call and my aggressiveness with, you know, my confidence, stuff like that. So, no, but in previous years, you know, when I was struggling with some stuff, I I did X, Y, and Z and hooked up on the, you know, rap Soto and stuff like that and track man and mm -hmm. really dialed in my numbers. But other than that, yeah, no, I just kind of knew, you know, I've had guys tell me like, hey, your fastball plays good here or here, you know, your slider looks good here, here. So I'm just kind of listening mm -hmm. to that, just doing it. Try not yeah. to complicate a lot of things, keep it simple and just compete. Yeah, absolutely. Were there certain guys that you watched growing up and throughout your career that you've, you know, taken things from either in the big leagues or, you know, teammates and are you watching on YouTube how to grip different pitches? You know, how, mm -hmm. how did that kind of progress? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm open ears with with teammates around me. You know, it might look like I'm in, invading in your conversation, but I'm just listening, uh, just kind of see what they do. But no, as a big leaguer standpoint, you know, uh, Jacob Degrom and Luke Weaver. I feel like me yeah. and Luke Weaver have a really similar pitching style with our grips and you know mechanics and stuff. But other than that, no, I just keep it like I said, simple and try and use, you know, just my rep, my reps and stuff during practice. And, you know, every, everybody's mechanics is going to be different. I think that's a big thing that, you know, going into college, I wish I knew was, you know, it doesn't have to look this certain way, but if you can repeat your mechanics and it be repeatable, then that gives you a shot to then compete on the mound and have a shot to, you know, execute in, in some batters. Absolutely. Like so, yeah. So after your junior year, you end up going and playing in the Cape Cod League on the mm -hmm. East Coast. So what was what was that summer like? And then comparing it to you know the West Coast League versus the Cape Cod. Cape Cod is well known as having mm -hmm. the best talent in the country. Yeah. So what was that like? Yeah. No. Uh, the WCL was a lot of fun, but the Cape was definitely a different animal. Um, just the experience out there in, in in the Cape, and you know the just the way of living out there for a summer, I had to get used to it. You know, once again, I had an amazing host family. Uh, they had some kiddos and a big old lake. So we got to hang out with them and really enjoy the summer. And uh, I created so many memories with those guys and the teammates and the coaching staff was super cool. And I think there I really was honed in on who I was as a pitcher. And I just was like, you know what, it's a little different than the WCL because you're kind of showcasing your stuff. And then you're also working as a team to, you know, win series and games and stuff like that. But yeah, no, I had a ton of fun. Play, uh, once again, played with some amazing guys. Um, Fernando Gonzalez from Georgia, catcher, Brady Montgomery. Um, crap, a whole lot. Uh, our, our team, I felt like our team was stacked with how many players we had. You know, um, Drew Dowd, a lot of guys from Stanford. But no, it was a lot of fun. It was a good experience. I felt like I got really good exposure and just the vibe of like the fan atmosphere in the Cape Cod is unbeatable. I mean, some of these, like I will say some of those fields are kind of rough to play on, but just the experience and like the atmosphere that you're playing around and, you know, the community aspect, it was a ton of fun. We did a lot of uh, kids camps in the mornings and then we play in the afternoons and evenings and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah man, that was so, so much fun. And, and you uh, tore it up. I mean, you had, 49 strikeouts in 31 innings, hmm. um, 24 hits allowed. So it seems like you had a good time over there. Yeah, yeah I know. I had a lot of fun. Uh, it was definitely different, you know, with the wood bats and stuff. It was kind of fun to break some wood bats here and there. But, <laughs> yeah, I know it was fun striking people out for sure. Yeah, and then heading into this senior year, you know, your, your last year in college, uh, what's your experience been like, been like this year? Is, has it just been trying to soak it all in? 
knowing that this is your your final year in, in college baseball? Yeah, no, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it felt weird because you know the old coaching staff left, and we still had all the players here at WSU. No one was entering the transfer portal. Um, only a couple of guys did, but we had a big chunk of the team still here, and and we were like, you know what, we're a good we're a good team, and you know we can compete and win games, and we just need a coaching staff to lead us. So that's what we did, and yeah, for like I just I think in the fall was different than my spring. I really took the fall like day by day and stuff like that and really tried to work on my craft. And I simplified a lot during the fall, learned how to really mature as a pitcher on the mound, um, you know, and, and the work ethic style and just how to be an organized, you know, pitching staff. We learned how to do that this fall. And then, yeah, I know entered the spring and, you know, I wasn't, I didn't want to be that guy that was focused on the draft or focused on, you know, the end of my career here at WSU. I just wanted to enjoy it. So I think the main goal was just to have fun. I think me and Choate before, before every game, it was like, hey, let's have some fun today and let's enjoy it and uh, enjoy it one inning at a time. So we did. And I think, you know, the guys around me when I was on the mound, it was a lot of fun. You know, we were on our on our feet, getting ready, staying hot, stuff like that. So yeah, it was a lot of fun to compete behind those guys and enjoy the moment and also have success. Yeah, and we got to talk about March 28th when you were at in yeah. Seattle. What was that experience like? I mean, I think it was 13 strikeouts in a row at one point, and uh, of course the school record 17 overall. Yeah, it was – I mean, I was blacked out the whole time. So <laughs> I wish I could tell you more. But, yeah, it was 10 in a row, 13 – you could tell because there's a video of when I got the school record. I had no clue. It looked like I was just like, it was like the second strikeout or whatever. I was just so checked out. It was literally so simple. It was, you know, A, B, C, get the pitch, throw the pitch, get the ball back, and then repeat. Um, yeah, I mean, I had a post-game interview with, you know, the announcer. And I think she's like, yeah, you said the school record has 17 strikeouts. And I was like, I did. I was so, and then from there, it was like, boom, I was shaking and all that stuff. And. And to do it, you know, that in that kind of atmosphere and with what, you know, what was going on with WSU um, that week, there was a lot of stuff going on with, you know, people leaving and people, you know, people going to different places. So it was super cool to kind of put Pullman on my back and, you know, represent for WSU. So that was a lot of fun. But yeah, no, it was, I don't know. It was, it was so cool. I mean, the 10 strikeouts, talking to Chode after that, he goes, yeah, I've only, you know, seen like eight in a row. So you're at nine. I was like, oh my gosh. And then 10 and, you know, having that, I don't know. I was, I wish I could tell you more. I was, yeah, I was blacked out for sure. I didn't know what was going on. I was enjoying it though, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it looked like you're, you're pumped up obviously after those mm -hmm. strikeouts and uh, yeah, especially going against the Huskies. I'm sure you got into that rivalry, rivalry a bit throughout your mm -hmm. career. So that, that meant a lot. I mean, you're going six, seven innings pretty much every day. Um, you've been you've been dialed in all year. What, what are you doing now to get ready for that next step in, you know, this coming summer? Yeah, no. End of the season came around and I was like, okay, I need to take a little break, but not too much of a break where my arm starts to hurt. So I think I took like three, four days off um, from throwing in the gym, didn't pick up baseball. Just kind of enjoyed being a, you know, a young adult again, went golfing. A lot. There you um, go. A lot of Blues guys. Ridge is awesome. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's that's one of the you know the perks of being in Pullman. There might not be a lot from the outside, but the golf is a lot of fun. So we enjoyed that a lot and kind of got back into it. Went on to a very slow, um, like a, a what would you say, like a like a recovery time where it's like three days a week. Now I'm slowly moving into some bullpen deals and. So uh, two bullpens a week with some throws and long toss days really emphasize long toss. Um, I think that helps a lot. That helped me a lot during the season. You know, I throw on Friday, take Saturday off, and then try and kill my arm again on Sunday and throw the ball as far as possible. So it was okay. fun hooking the balls around the baseball field, you know, visiting new places. Uh, when we went to the, um, the Round Rock Classic, got to play long toss there, and that was super cool, kind of taking the whole atmosphere of, you know, the stadium, because when you're, when I'm pitching, I'm only looking at the catcher. So right. I get to kind of take a step back and enjoy the moment for sure. But 
yeah, just trying to be I'm in the weight room, you know, five days a week, four days a week, um, throwing three, four days a week with some off days in there and just trying to get ready for the next level for sure. Get an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you've been going to, to school for construction management from what mm -hmm. I've seen. So walk me through your decision to, to major in construction management. How has that been to, you know, learn as much as you can while also balancing being, being an athlete and, and yeah. that experience? Yeah, no, ever since I was a little kid, I love playing with, you know, dirt in my backyard and stuff like yeah. that. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but, you know, going into college, I was like, you know, I could probably do civil engineering. So freshman year, I chose civil engineering. And then I think I only made it like three, four months until I was like, this is hard. So went construction management route, a lot more communication based, um, which was super nice. Uh, yeah, that. That degree in itself, they were super supportive of my baseball career. You know, there was a lot of uh, time conflicts and stuff like that with, you know, the spring traveling, being on the road for so long with the Pullman weather, you know, and then in the fall too, working with groups and stuff like that. And a lot of the classes they offered or the only classes they offered for construction management was in the afternoon. So that was usually during practice time. So I had days where I was doing this or I was doing that, but yeah, it was a good balance of you know, baseball in school, because you are a, a student first before an athlete. So you got to take that pretty serious. But yeah, I graduated, really excited to dive into that career once baseball's over. Um, so I know it's not the end of the world if nothing happens with baseball, but I'm praying, it, you know, I can still play baseball. But yeah, I'm excited to take those next next steps for sure. Yeah. What do you like to do in, in your off time? You, you got golf, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Is there any other stuff that, that you like to do to, to yeah. relax and take a deep breath? Golf, watch movies. Um, my roommates and I are super into movies. Um, you know, we have a good backyard set up. So, you know, sit by the fire or grill up some steaks or whatever and go golf or go fish by the snake. Um, you know, go hang out with my girlfriend. She's up in Montana. So go visit her beautiful state of Montana. So I kind of enjoy a lot of it. Um, try not to watch too much baseball because I don't want to get burnt out, but still keep me fresh, you know. So definitely yeah. enjoy my off time for sure. Absolutely. And then I, I know that you're, you know, big into faith. I'm curious mm -hmm. to hear about your your journey with that and how that's helped strengthen your abilities across the board. Yeah. And, and what that means to you. Yeah, no, I mean throughout a lifetime, you know, you're, you're learning ups and downs and it's, it's a relationship with God that you want to strengthen daily. And I think it was going into my sophomore year. I was like, you know, I got to make a choice and, you know, it's either, you know, this path or this path. And I chose, you know, God in the driver's seat and me in the passenger seat, which is a little harder than you think to do. But yeah, once you give your life up to the Lord and, you know, you're allow all the stresses and stuff and you have time for prayer and reading scripture and all that stuff. It's, it's really nice. And it's super nice when we have a good group of guys on the team that, you know, we do Bible studies on Sundays in the fall and try and spread the word during the season in hotels and stuff like that. So it's helped me a lot to realize, like, I'm not defined by baseball, mm -hmm. but I am a, you know, a child of God and, you know, I can do other things in life. And, I think if I embrace that aspect of life and like through my daily walk, I think it just brings a lot more happiness. Um, I am a jokester around the field, try and keep things light and loose. But then when I'm pitching, I'm dead serious. So it's kind of funny, you know, guys make fun of me for being so goofy. And then they're like, dude, you just set the school record, but you're over here doing this <laughs> and, you know, making all these jokes and stuff. So I try and keep it light, but yeah, no, I, I give, I give everything to God and, you know, it, it's been amazing that, you know, he's given me the opportunity to do this and, you know, share the word through him and just be a better servant for him. So yeah, super blessed for sure. And grateful. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm excited to see you progress and get to that next stage so that you can share the message on your, your next platform oh, and yeah. a bigger platform. So uh, Grant really appreciate your time. Uh, really interesting to hear your story and, kind of a, a bit about your journey. So I'm looking Thanks forward to so watching you the rest of the way. And thank you. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Connor. Go Cougs. Yeah. Go Cougs. Santa Margarita Catholic High School in the dirt. And he gets another strikeout. 17 strikeouts for Grant Taylor. Number one in the history of Washington State baseball.